Okay, well, I think we can get started then. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and start this morning if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, good morning to everybody. Uh, hey. Just wanted to go around the room and let you know who's in the room. Mm -hmm. I've got John Mora, Anthony Key, Brad Crabtree, Randy Smart, Steve Bowers, and Jason Cook. Art should be joining us pretty pretty shortly. He'll just be a uh, alternate, and then uh, Zach may jump on later after his uh, hazmat class. Okay. So that's who we have on our side, and we can okay. see your group. Yes. Yeah. And um. Yes. Everybody. I don't know if videos on, but we can see their names. Yeah, no, nobody's sharing their their video oh, here but me. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so I thought we could begin by kind of picking up first where we left off on healthcare. Um, I know we we came to a, a verbal um, kind of tentative agreement on the healthcare plan design changes. Uh, but there were some things that we talked about incorporating that you know, because of time, I actually hadn't made the changes to the actual um, Word doc. And I've been playing around with those through the weekend. And I, I believe I just emailed you the most recent version. And I was going to go ahead and share it on my screen right now and go through it. And hopefully that it captures, um, you know, what we're agreeing to. And if not, then let's, you know, have that dialogue right now. But I'm hoping I captured everything from our notes of our last meeting. So I think I'm going to start there, if that's all right with you. That's fine with us. OK. So I'm going to share my screen. Like I said, I emailed this to you. This is uh, just a few minutes ago, the most recent one. So the. The first part is just the updated on the premium costs. Remember when we, um, one of the things that we said before we left our meeting last week was uh, Ramon was going to have their numbers run based on a few of the adjustments that you would like to see. And we just needed to make sure that it was within a 1% uh, of our, what we had already put on the table as far as Costco. It actually went down just a, a few dollars from on both sides. So that's reflected here. Um, everything else should stay the same. Okay, I know we brought this up last time. The formulary here to calculate premiums was an eight step process before, but at y'all's request, we have removed the um, GASB from the calculation. So it ends at seven and then made it its own section. This is the one area that um, I kind of <laughs> felt I didn't have quite some clarity on when we left off. So I, I just really haven't changed it. It's not because I'm convinced it needs to be one way or the other, or the city's convinced it needs to be one way or the other. But, you know, we talked, we, it's like we, we kind of came to a tentative agreement on the plan design and what that would look like. And this is what we want to see. This is what we want to see on the HSA. But on the fund balance, you know, we've had so much discussion on it that didn't really come back up at the end. So I just left it as is. I didn't know if y'all really wanted to keep uh, funding at that 5% or if we did just want to remove it in all and get, you know, have the 1.7 um, immediately come over. I just, you know, again, I just left that in. We can have that discussion and kind of clarify that, um, you know, soon, actually today, um, as soon as we're done going through it, unless you have any direct questions about it right now. Then we, you know, we can um, it might be easier just to let you go through. Okay through the proposal and we'll come back through. We've got some questions on different uh, aspects of the article. Okay. If we do have a question in this section, but it may be easy to just let you do your thing. Okay. Questions and that'll narrow it down and then we can talk about it. Okay. So you see that that's all left the same. 
This is the plan structure for the uh, PPO option. You'll see that none of that, none of this was changed. It's a 500,000, um, but we did, and um, which I explained at the our last meeting, we did match the out of pot, out of network cost to it rather than having it such a larger increase. So 500 and a thousand out of network, 500,000 in network. I have changed something that you pointed out to me um, over the weekend that I didn't catch there and I have no idea why it really was worded that way. Um, but you're correct in your assessment and uh, <clears throat> that the out-of-pocket cost includes co-pays and deductibles. So instead of having the excluding, I just changed it to including for uh, more clarity and make sure that we're all saying the same thing. So that's changed here. I think that's it on the PPO. So then we'll move down to the HSA or CDHP with HSA. I have adjusted the rates as well, just um, in the same fashion that adjusted the PPO plan. One of the things that I did add just for clarity purposes, and I did add this in the PPO section as well. Um, I just I forgot to bring that up was that you make, the you make the determination or you elect into one of the plans either during open enrollment or during a qualifying event. Um, the qualifying event, they're defined by IRS regulation, but they're also included in our plan summaries. So people will know, you know, uh, marriage, divorce, things like that, loss of job on one end, you know, from a spouse or something, those will be qualifying events that would um, allow for an election mid-year, mid so. <clears throat> Julia, would that also include uh, marriage or the birth of a child, right? Yes. Okay. And just real quick, speaking on that, if if a if a member had a PPO or a CDHP, one way or the other, and had a qualifying event, let's say that they're under the CDHP, they've already got their HSA and they had a qualifying event, wanted to swap back to the PPO mid-year, y'all guys would either probate or prorate that uh, HSA contribution, either way, right? You're either gonna lose money or, or get, get money? Well, jo Johnny, if I could speak to that, if, um, if they're in the PPO, I'm sorry, Let's start off. If they're in the high deductible plan at the beginning of the plan year, they would have received the full HSA contribution because of the way it's presently being designed to front load that cost in the very first month. So if perchance they were to go into a qualified life event and they decided to go to the PPO program at that point, there is no proration or no refund request. That full amount has been given. Um, and with some of the articles that we showed you in our very first meeting, uh, IRS requirements, we cannot come back and uh, take any of those funds back out of that uh, HSA account. Once it's given, it's given. However, now on the reverse, if they were originally in the PPO plan, and then they decide through a qualified life event to go to the high deductible plan, then at that point, the high deductible plan, they could uh, receive a prorated HSA contribution because it's the first time that they entered into the high deductible plan in the plan year. So depending on the timing of when they come in, it will be prorated, uh, the full amount would be prorated from the time they enter to the end of the plan year. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So let's see. End. Okay. One of the the changes that I have made here 
also remove the excluding language from this area and put including for clarifying purposes. But I also put in parentheses something that we discussed at our last meeting. I just want to make sure that not only was clear, but that no one was caught off guard. The Remember, we, we explained that under the CDHP regulations, the employee wellness clinic has to have a market value um, charge to it in order to be able to, to use it under the plan. But those payments do not get applied to the overall out-of-pocket costs or deductible. Um, I know Ramon had mentioned that and um, in our last meeting, I had some notes on it. Um, I, I added this in with a comment to say, let me double check on that. I checked on that with Ramon this morning and that is correct. Those payments do not get applied towards that. So that's just so that everybody knows and is aware of that. You can still use it, but it will not count towards the overall deductible or out-of-pocket costs. Okay. Is that include the letter at the clinic? I said that again, sorry. Did that include the lab? Yeah, if they need lab work at the clinic, does that include that? Is it the $15? You know, that's a good question. Ramon, do you know? Yes, it, it, that full cost factor is outside of the plan altogether. So that would include um, the uh, labs and the um, $20 visit. Okay. Okay, so then we get to the HSA. <clears throat> the first part is, is the same as what we had before. I did add in what Ramon just spoke to about the um, prorated HSA. If an, uh, a firefighter, because of a qualifying life event, joins the uh, fire CDHP mid-year, mid, mid then they would receive the prorated part for the remaining part of that fiscal year. So. And then this is language that I'm kind of playing around with and that we can still, you know, talk about if there's any questions. This is about a the one-time you kind know, of additional contributions towards the HSA for those uh, firefighters who elect uh, to enroll into the fire CDHP during this first uh, fiscal year that we'll have it in place under this agreement. Um, I have in there that this additional one-time contribution will be funded through a portion of the unrestricted fund balance not to exceed $300,000. The amount of the contribution may will fluctuate depending on how many firefighters choose to enroll in the fire CDHP during the city's open enrollment period. Uh, for fiscal year 2021. However, the maximum contribution will be $1,500. Um, that was something that we did discuss at our last meeting. Um, after a conversation with Ramon late Friday, the, the question was, you know, what if there's, what if there's money that's remaining, you know, say they don't have you know, even at the 1500 max, depending how many come in, there could potentially be an, a portion of this $300,000 remaining, you know, do what, you know, does that just go back into the fund balance? What do we want to do? And my, my thought, and really is just a thought, that's just something I've added in and just letting you know, I'm just putting it out there to start a conversation was to anything that's, uh, that's remaining after this first part. So depending on how many enroll, any portion of the 300,000 that's remaining could be moved as a one-time contribution into the Association Health and Benefits Trust. So you wouldn't know which what the portion is, if any, until after um, you know, open enrollment closes. Okay. That's just, like I said, just a thought to throw out there. Um, for us, so this is the same for what we had last time. I know that last time y'all said you weren't interested in the dental plan. Um, I just wanted to revisit that, or if you if you wanted to have a little more dialogue on it, we could. Um, that was something that I was kind of surprised about personally, um, given that you know it, it's a full fledged plan. 
with benefits and stuff. So I've left it in, but it's very easy to remove. If you just tell me, no, never, we just really aren't interested. We're just going to say it are $30. That's fine. But for now, um, since we are talking about it, I, I thought I would just go ahead and, and leave it in there. Uh, but that's very easy to remove. It really is something that you aren't interested in. <clears throat> and the vision plan, which you did say you're interested in, is there. So. Can you go back to the the dental? Yeah. Yes. Let me let me ask you let me ask you a question. Okay. You know, I think we were a little hasty with you know our last meeting and, and saying that maybe we weren't interested in it. Um is there is there a scenario where we could maybe have the dental plan as an option and keep the supplemental insurance provision in the contract to where I'm just going to make up a number where if a hundred employees decided to take this <coughs> insurance and 300 of us didn't that that supplemental insurance payment would be modified. Is that something we could do? You mean um, offering basically the city putting their $30 into one or the other, depending on who elects which. So a hundred guys elect the dental plan, then the $30, you know, $30, $30 for those hundred guys goes here and the, re the rest goes to the supplemental plan. Something like that. Um, yes, I think there's probably a few concerns. I know Ramon brought one up to me earlier this morning, which is about, what was it mid-year changes, Ramon? Is that what you mentioned? Yes. That we, yeah, we probably I, need to discuss. Yeah, I, I believe um, the the offer, uh, making sure that the $30 is available to uh, the dental program, regardless of which plan you choose, it would be fine. I, I don't see any concerns um, from that vantage point. Uh, for those who want to choose a dental plan, they receive the $30 value there. If they want to continue the uh, reimbursement program, they receive their $30 there. The question would be in mid-year, um, or a best, I guess the best way to say it is whatever choice they choose, that's their choice for the plan year. Yeah, that, that's what we were kind of thinking too. When you make that election, you can only change that once a year and that's an open enrollment. Exactly. Okay. Would, that, would that be something that's doable, Lilia, if, if we had something that would lock you into that, your election that year? Ramon, can we? I mean, if they have some type of qualifying life event, though, can we agree to that in just during in this section? So one time election during open enrollment and that's it? Exactly. Yeah, the qualifying okay. life yeah. event could be um, a, a limited to within the plan so that you can choose a qualifying life event from family to spouse or to employee only. From employee only to family, but, but not actually changing exactly. options. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, Johnny, I think so. Okay. Okay. All right, so I, I think from my end, that's that was the majority of the changes. I might've had a few typo corrections and stuff that, that I can't recall, but that really is the, the bulk of it. Can, um, you, um, can you increase the, can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah. Is that better? Yes, ma'am. So I just wanted to run through a couple of questions that we had. Okay. I think on it's page two, about the middle of the page, right there. Yeah, sorry. Go back, right there. Okay. I'm sorry, go up a little bit more. Okay. So one, two, three, it's the fourth paragraph. Can you scroll up a little bit? Shouldn't that, that last sentence there, shouldn't it also include the CDHP?
because there, although there's two plans, and we all know it's city care, fire, health, insurance. Yeah. They have two options inside that plan. Yes. Yeah, yeah. you know, actually, my thought was, and I, I was playing with this last night, it's just going to take a lot of reformatting. Is this whole, um, a lot of this whole section should probably be its own section rather than embedded in the section with the PPO only. I think it really should be its kind of its own. Okay, this is how we come up with premiums. This is how we come up with, you know, um, but yes, I see what you're saying. And I think if, I think if we were to kind of create it as this is, this applies to all plan options, then that would make it much clearer. And then you just have each plan separated uh, by their premium and, and plan structure and keep this, you know, just applying to all of them. I, I, I think that might make it clearer. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Can you go to the bottom of that second page? Yes. Right there. It says the city will fulfill its obligations. If we're removing if we're removing Gatsby, this this section probably needs to be removed and, and replaced with a definitive statement that Gatsby and OPEB are not used in the calculation. And that may be a Ramon question. Yeah, Johnny, I uh, certainly understand that. A position and, and I would agree with you. Uh, the calculation will still apply from an internal standpoint, but since it's not being used to add to the calculation of the premiums, it doesn't have to be a part of this process. Okay. Well, can we can we strike that? And just some type of definitive statement that says that Gatsby and OPEB are not a part of the equation. I know I know that we took them out of that equation. They were number Eight, I think it was exactly seven or eight. Um, just some type of definitive uh, statement that says Gasby and OPEB are not a part of the equation. Is that possible? Ramon, does that? Yeah, I, I'd like to, to look at that a little closely, but I understand if, if we're saying the equation being the premium equation, then, right. and then yes, that. that that would I would support that understanding that it's, a, it's it shouldn't be there if it's associated to the premium equation. Right, and we we would almost insist that there would be a definitive uh, definition that OPEB and Gatsby are not a part of the equation, even though they're not listed. We 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 understand that, right. but you know the more times that we can spell out exactly what is, the better. There's no ambiguity. The only thing, Johnny, that I want to make certain that, because um, I'm, I'm making the distinction of the statement saying premium equation, and this also includes the past cumulative um, record of the 5%, and I don't know that that's been defined yet, what right. is going to occur. Right, and that's, that's true, and I think we're going to get to that, and maybe that'll give us a little more clarity on which way we're going to go. Okay. Maybe we'll just keep that second portion of the of the Senate, uh, the paragraph, just keep that in mind and knowing that that's good potentially change. Right? Exactly. Okay. Okay. That. Okay. Well, I've made a note to on there to myself so that way when we get there I'll know what to come back and do. Okay. So on the on the next page, Lillian. In uh, number four, you got that same thing. Like you said, you're talking about renaming the whole thing, city care, health, fire, insurance plan, right? So we, we just wanna make sure that the CDHP is also, yeah. you know, apples to apples. Yes, and that's, in, and even when, when you go down to the CDHP and stuff, we talk about premiums are gonna be calculated using this formula above. Which is right. why my thought was, okay, this needs to be its totally own section. This is how you know premium rates are calculated. This is how the plans are are going to be, um, you know, costed costed out and and you know funded whatever, and then go into the breakout of the plans themselves. So yeah, I think that will make it much clearer rather than 
you know, like in the CDHP portion reflecting, okay, premium rates are going to be calculated using the formula above, but the formula above is actually embedded in the PPO plan. So, yeah, I, I, I think we need to remove it and just make a one section on it. So, to the, back up to the top where, you know, it talks about the following components will be used. So, one of the things that we, we need to, I guess, maybe think about or look at is all of the starting balances need to be updated. We think they need to be updated to our current year. And we had a couple of questions the last couple of years of exactly what is the fund balance? And maybe it's as simple as defining it in the contract as to exactly what the fund balance is. And I know that we've had some, you know, discussions about what we think it is, what y'all think it is, and, and maybe it's simpler just to put it in writing, this is what the fund balance actually is. It would, I mean, do you mean I putting language in there that it's going to be identified each year or putting language in like the specific number in there, even though that's subject to change each year? Um, well, I mean, the, the, the document subject to change each year because of the fluctuations in the plan, but what's included in the fund balance should never change. Okay. And I'm just making something up. If it's A, B, and C, it's always A, B, and C. And right now, you know, y'all guys think it's A, B, C, and D, and we think it's A, B, C, D, and E. So just something a little more definitive. So when, when we ask, hey, what's our fund balance? We both know it's, it's this plus this plus that. Okay. And that's all it is. Gotcha. So on the next page, Again, it's just one of those, and you've already addressed it, talking about, you know, this one talks about the City Care Fire Health Insurance Plan. It needs to have the CDHP in it as well. Yes. And then I almost wonder if, if these need to be up, these numbers need to be updated too to the current year. These are from 2012. 14. Can you give me one second? Okay, sorry about that. Okay. So that brings us to the past cumulative. If you want to scroll down to that. Okay. Give me one more second. Hey, Lillian. Yes. All right, I didn't need to, I just had to confer with my team, but we, we actually want to remove that past cumulative. Okay. So that would be from 5% of the past all the way to the end of, of uh, C. 
I mean, we're removing OPEB and GASB anyway, so there's no reason really to have that. Hey, Johnny, just for clarification in the removal of the 5%, are we talking about, uh, because in our last conversation, John to, to take the full 1.7 out of the fund at once? Or are we talking about keeping the past cumulative 5% to continue funding the 1.7? We, we want you to take it all out. All out at once? Yes, sir. Okay. That was the exercise we went through last week, right? Right. I just wanted, uh, just looking for clarification. And so are we also saying the, so we're taking it all out. Um, so it would be the current $2 million. So that 3.8 that we were discussing would be the full amount to remove from the fund balance. Give me one. Okay, Lillian. Sorry about that. Yeah, we, we understand what we're talking about, and uh, we want to pay that, that balance off and remove that from the contract. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just making notes on, on my screen. So, It would be here all the way down to the remaining part. Yeah, all the way to the end of C, from 5% all the way down to the end of C. Okay. Ramon, do you have any, any uh, questions on that? No, not at the moment. I think that's, um, we're, we're talking about fully funding it um, of the current liability at this point. Um, from the fund balance, well, the full 3.8. Understood. Is that what you would recommend, Ramon? Yeah, if you're, if, um, you're wanting to remove it out of the fund balance, then yes, uh, that we cover the 1.7 um, instead of that 5% uh, 
um, per annum that yes, yeah, that we move it all out now. So even if I, you know, when I, if I delete all this here, so I'm just gonna do that there. Um, do we need to add anything in its place though to account for like what you just said? I mean, I guess that's a, a conversation we can have. I mean, I just, I just wanna make sure Lee, I think it goes to the questions that I've been asking, you know, talking about changing the, the numbers, the balances, you know, all that stuff. I think it all, it's going to kind of all go together. It could probably go all there. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. So at the end of the schedule of benefits, you already covered it, which is, you know, that the total out of pockets includes the uh, co pays and deductible. So you got that one covered already. Yes. Trying to get there. there you, go. Can you go to the uh, the CDHP um, summary of plan benefits. Sure. Specifically, the wellness clinic. Okay. So you guys say that, that it has to be a, a market value, right? Right. So the CDHP guys, they're they're part of the equation. They pay into the fund, they 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 fund the clinic. What is what is a you know although twenty dollars isn't bad, you know, we were thinking more along the lines of fifteen and fifteen. Or we, you know, we can revisit that. We've already determined market value for this is actually being 35. That's what we charge the other plans who are also funding into this as well. Um, civilians and uh, PD all have the 35 and the 15 because the 15 we can't change. Um, so we're already going below that in this in this instance. Um, I think that you know. Um, we, I know Ramon would like to see moving everyone to that 20, but I, I'm not sure if that's something that's going to happen. But as far as going even below that, um, yeah, I just, I think that might be a little more difficult. You know, it's pretty simple. They, they don't pay anything for their insurance. So, I mean, I can understand why you want to charge those guys a little more, but we're, we're actually paying a premium, um, you know, to have a yeah. seat. Be. And although it's, you know, it's a very nice plan, you know, just, we, we were just asking the question. Okay. But we would ask you, that'd be 15 and 15. Okay. I'll talk to Ramon about that. So from there, if we could go to the next page. Okay. Keep going. Huh? Keep going. Yeah, I'm sorry, on the, on the out of pocket, you've already fixed it there. So yes. that was one of the questions that we had. So the next one is the, is that the, the HSA contribution. And I know, you know, what you had put in there, we understand how that's going to work. And I think when we, when we looked at the plans, the PPO versus the CDHP, this is why we were at 1800 is, 1800 makes the plans almost identical at 1800. Um, Open it down to 1600, you know, makes the CDHP, it's not a break even basically. You know, it's going to cost another couple hundred bucks. Um, maybe we could. You're talking about the 1800 um, to the employee only and the employee only HSA? Yeah, yeah the employee only 1800 and then the, the family, I think we're okay at 2600 on the family. Okay. Kind of, kind of along with that, and we kind of touched on this last week, but we wanted to talk to you about some language on, on an employee who's in, eligible to
to receive an HSA. That would be your like military guys. Um, actually, that would probably be the only kind of people, but they're, they're not eligible for an HSA, right, Ramon? I think it's if they have the, one of the other plans. Right, Depend, it depends on what type of plan that they're in that would disqualify them for uh, high deductible, to participate in our high deductible plan. Uh, but that also means that they're inside of another high deductible plan that they're receiving the HSA uh, contribution or value from that plan. That's why you can't double dip. Uh, we, we get that. So right. someone who was, let's say, in a, in a government tri, what do they call it, tri-care? Tri-care plan, and they have a high deductible plan, and they get an HSA in that plan, right? They're not eligible for an HSA inside of this plan, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. Okay. So to put them in the, in the CDHP or they're elect, they elect to be in the CDHP, is there another way to give them the, and maybe it's not the 1800 or the 1600, maybe it's a thousand dollars, but it's put in an FSA. They're still employees. They're just not getting the benefit of the HSA. Now the, the, the value um, associated to the plan cost is designed upon the full participation. If you start trying to divvy out and carve out certain value plans, it's gonna change the full cost structure that we've all um, processed up to this point. Um, that, that, that would probably not be beneficial uh, at this time. It, and the, uh, the other part is that the HS, the high deductible plan is one option for the value orientation of the employee. If they don't qualify, then they have the other plan that they can participate in where all of this, the dual issues are eliminated and they just participate in the PPL. Okay. And if they have TRICARE, I'm not even sure that they would want to participate in any plan because they would not need to be involved in either one of our plans. Okay, sounds good. And we already talked about the dental coverage, right, Lillian? Yes, I think we're gonna try to explore okay. offering both, but limiting the um, limiting the option during the middle of the year. So one one or the other for each year. And once you make your question, it's done for that year. Okay, can you give me one second? Yes. Hey, hey Lillian. Uh-huh. Can you scroll to the dental, please? Scroll what? Sorry. The dental? Yes. <clears throat> We're probably going to need these questions from Ramon. Okay. Further down? Yeah. Can you go to the schedule of benefits? There you go, right there. Hey, Ramon. Yes, sir. That, uh, that $4,500, mm -hmm. uh, we know that the orthodontics is outside of that, right? $3,500? Yes, sir. Is the $4,500 per individual? Yes, sir. So if, if I had me and my wife, we both get $4,500? Yes. And... No, there's a 
No, that's that's the maximum benefit, benefit forty five hundred. That's for that's for everybody. Each. And that's per planned year. Okay. Except for the orthodontics, which is only one time. A lifetime max on the on the forty five hundred. Did you hear that, Ramon? No, sir. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. He says optional coverage for the orthodontics. You have to pay extra if you want the orthodontic care. I'm still not picking that up 100%. I'm sorry, Johnny. On the orthodontics, it says it's optional. Is that something you have to pay for or? Where's, it, where's your language that you're referring to? Optional coverage. Yeah. No, the op yeah optional coverage is only if you choose to participate in that particular benefit option. Uh, that those would be the limitations for that option. There's no additional premium associated to it. It's a part of the plan uh, benefit. Okay. What is that predetermination amount? Good question. I need to look at that. I'm not sure exactly what that is at the moment. Let me see if I can grab that real quick here. Be right back. Yes, sir. I got it. It's, it's language. Uh, I got to get used to different language here. Uh, the predetermination amount is the assessment of the orthodontic. So it's basically the first appointment so that when you sit down and do an assessment over orthodontic work, there's a charge for that. And so the predetermination amount for the orthodontic costs, that initial office visit would be $300. Okay. Is that one for the is that towards the 3,500? Yes, that would go toward the full benefit that's being offered for the value of orthodontic services. Hey, Lilia. Yes, sir. She's got a couple of questions. Okay. On the on the dental plans. On the which one? Dental. Dental. Okay. Um, under the schedule of benefits. Let me let me get to it. So you have written out, and it's actually in every one of them, 85% of allowable amount. What, what does that mean? It, uh, the allowable amount, it, just like on the medical insurance plan, it's the in-network price amount that uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, who this plan is underwritten by, and the dentists agreed upon an amount that they would charge for a particular service. And so that's the allowed amount. Most dental um, dentists like physicians join networks. When they join the network, they have to join it at a discounted rate for their service. And so if you were to walk in without the dental plan, the retail price is gonna be much higher than what the network cost is going to be. And so what this is saying, just simply letting you know, it's the network allowed, allowed expenses that they will pay for. And is that written somewhere? 
that yeah the the what do you mean the actual allowed amount yeah i'm just going to make up a scenario so i go to a i go to a in-network dentist and a crown cost 800 bucks let's say right so let's say that that's the allowable amount yes sir. if i go to a dentist outside the network and a crown costs a thousand the plan's only going to cover the 800 yeah, actually, we're, we're, we're not even addressing out of network on this. Um, and in fact, the plan design that I received from Blue Cross Blue Shield doesn't even address out of network. Um, what, so I would have to look more specifically about the out of network cost. The, the point of this statement is if you're in network and the cost that you said was say the plant the, the dentist would charge $1,000, whether you had insurance or not, he would charge $1,000. But because you have insurance, the allowed amount is $800 in, the, in that particular network that you're in, then this plan would pay 85% of the in-network allowed amount. Okay. Could the dentist be able to bill us for the other 200? Or is he agreed to do it for 800? He agrees to do it for 800. The problem is the out of network. So he's finding an in network benefit. Right. Just finding an in network. Is there a list of them? I'll show you can do for it. So so Ramon, under this under this dental plan, right? Say I go for preventive. It's gonna pay hundred percent, right? Yes, sir. I have nothing out of pocket. Then I go for restorative. And actually I don't pay no out of pocket until I hit my forty five hundred. No, sir, John, the, the $4,500 is not a deductible. It's a, a limit on how much the plan will pay on your behalf inside of a plan year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, but if I use up the whole $4,500 and I still have something, another procedure to do, that's then I have to pay that at 100%. Yes, sir, you're, you're on your own at that point. Inside okay. that plan year. Okay. That's the forty. The 4,500 would renew every plan year. Ramon, one more question on, on the dental. Would, let me, let me read something real quick. Would retirees be eligible for that dental plan at the full rate? Good question. Presently, we were basing this entire presentation on the $30 that we submit to the active employees and retirees were not included. And so we didn't position this from a pricing standpoint to include retirees. Um, and I just to put it on the table, if perchance you begin to add benefits to retirees, it changes the entire OPEB liability structure because they're the ones who create the OPEB liability. So if we increase benefits to retirees, we're gonna increase the OPEB liability. And since part of this practice is to remove our conversation to say is to remove the OPEB out, then the liability to the city that responsibility goes up even higher if we offer it to retirees. A long way of saying, at present, they're not included. Okay, Julia, could you? Give me one minute real quick. Okay. Hey, Lilia. Yes, sir. All right, we're back. Um, could you could you craft it to where you know we would we would like to to do the dental, but we'd also like to keep option open for anyone who didn't want to take that dental. Is okay. that 
to work on? Yes, so we, what we kind of talked about earlier, yeah. which was offering both, but only one election per year. Okay, great. So, so let, me ask a, let me ask a quick question. Let's say that we, we agree you know, to the insurance and it's got the dental in it, and we, we keep that option available, you know, the $30 or whatever, whoever doesn't elect this dental plan. And let's say that we have 300 people elect to take this dental insurance. Is there a way that we can come back, revisit the dental and just get rid of the second option? Would that be something? I know it's gonna be, I know it's a timing issue. We'd have to reopen the contract, but it makes no business sense for either one of us to have 300 guys, 300 people in this plan and 100 people in the other plan. Makes no sense. In that same year, are you thinking if you see that enrollment is you know, X amount over that first year, then maybe in the second year, reopening to remove that and just include everyone? Right. I think that would be easier, right? you know, go through one contract year and then, you know, if we see enrollment passes 75% that are in the dental plan, then we agree that we'll, in the second year, um, drop the supplemental plan and have 100% migration over to the <laughs> dental plan here at the $30 a month. Does that sound like Ramon, right? I mean, is, yes, is that the easier? I would agree with you from both an administrative standpoint as yeah. well as um, as long as as you all are, are okay to open the contract up the next fiscal year. Um, well, see, that's what I'm thinking. Instead of reopening it, if we had language in there that was already that could already cover it. So right. if in, if year one saw blank percentage of migration over to the corp, you know, to the actual dental plan, then in year two moving forward. Um, you would only have the dental plan and we would remove the supplemental. So you wouldn't actually have to get back to the table to reopen it. It would just, it would auto, if you take that qualifier, it would. What do you think, Johnny? Hey, Delia. Yeah. We like that idea. You said if, if the plan enrollment was 75% or more, the supplemental health payment, um, would cease the following year and everybody would be right for that option. Yeah. But once that once that elect once that's done, it's done. There won't be no flip flop. Right. Yeah. So I mean I, I think the way to set it up so that you don't have to have that reopener is, you know, year one you look at it and if it if it hits a certain percentage, I'm just throwing out 75%, then beginning year two the supplemental program will no longer be offered and the sole dental plan will be as fault, well, you know, that we'll refer back to this as follows. And that's it moving. And then for the remaining contract term. You know what I'm saying, Ramon? That way you don't have to um, um, reopen anything. It would, it would um, operate on its own depending on what, how it turned out. Agree. Yeah, I, I think that's clean uh, from an administrative standpoint. It works well for our, our plan designs as uh, also. Um, yeah, I, I think just your wording to be able yeah, to, yeah, I gotta play around with that, uh, to but... process and eliminate it could do. Okay.
Okay, Lilia. Okay. I think we're good, right? So do you want me to start working on some language about that um, qualifier? Yeah, the 75%, it'll yes. be one plan, blah, blah, blah. Until then, it'll be uh, optional if they, whoever doesn't take that plan, the $30 payment, you know, all that stuff. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll I'll, I'll work on that. I don't think it should take long. I'll send it for your to you for review. Okay. Hey, Lilia. Huh? So we're just we're trying to cover the base, right? With the seventy-five percent. The the problem with that is, let's say that it's seventy percent. Is there is there a way to write an option where we both could agree? Maybe not tie it to a seventy-five percent, but something along the lines of. Unless otherwise agreed to by the parties. Something like that? Yeah. It's, I mean, we like 75%, but... If we're at 73, you might still want to move that way anyway then. If we had 65%, we might do the same thing. Okay. Off anybody's back, right? Because it's, it's either this or that. Maybe something we can just agree to. I, I like the way... I'll, I'll, I'm going to do it at the 75% unless otherwise mutually agreed. Okay. 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 You need some time? I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll do that um, once we break and stuff. I'll start working on that. It'll okay. take me a little bit of time, but I'll, I'll get that. Um, is that all the questions as far as on the health care plan? I know. I've got removing the OPEB liability, talking about still though identifying it, the fund balance and in, in a way that's clear what's included. Um, I'm going to clean up the formulary for rates and do it in a, in a way that addresses all plans. So we're gonna separate that out um, rather than fitting it into one particular plan, just we're going to separate it, then go into each plan on its own, separately on its own plan design. Um, and then on the dental plan, we're going to offer both options in the first year. Um, with the condition, though, that you can only make one election per year, and then adding a qualifier, um, could possibly removing the supplemental dental plan if enrollment hits 75% or more, unless it's otherwise agreed to. So those are the things that I can start working on, I believe. Okay. Sure. I think the... And this is, uh, let me just make sure on the dental plan that we're going to, it's strictly for active employees, correct? That's what we're looking at. Dental plan. 
the dental plan, yes. Yeah, Ramon had said something about, yeah. you know, it changes the structure of the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, the only the last thing, Lily, was can we get, um, I, I don't know what you guys call it, but we got two sheets last week that showed the plan. Um, they were labeled number six. Can we get that updated? Yes. It, it looks, it's a little easier to look at. Yeah, no, I agree. And can we get that when you come back? Yes. Yeah, that'll take me a little bit of time, but I'll I'll uh, work right. on it. Um, yeah, we'll start working on this. Okay. Do you have Eddie available yet? Um, yeah, he's available and ready when we want to start talking about some numbers. Um, I have a couple of um, some non-economic proposals to put forward. I know we said that we wanted to use this as a meeting to last bring any additional proposals, new proposals to the table. Um, there, let me hold on, I'll stop sharing this real quick. Um, nothing large, nothing significant, just some, some cleanup stuff. I wanted to go ahead and share those with you first, if you don't mind. Give me a second. Johnny, I emailed these to you earlier. Um, but I'm going to share them here also. All right, this is the first one. This is related to Article 30 and the drug and alcohol testing. Um, the only thing that we are asking here is under Section 2 for random drug tests. We're asking for the city manager and the HR director to be removed from the process. I don't know when that got put in there or why, and honestly, it really doesn't make sense given that those guys fall under another drug test policy with this on the city side. If you want to, I can tell you the story of why they're in there. Uh-oh. Is, is it no, no, no. That's okay. Can you can you uh, zoom in a little bit? Yes, please. Yeah. It's a second. So in that section two, I think that was Really, the only question that we really had was um, those, <clears throat> the city manager and the human resources director, they're, they're covered under a drug policy. It's just won't be ours, right? Yes, right. It just won't be all either. I guess this is our in addition to, and we're, I, I had never even realized it until recently either. So. Yeah, okay. You want a TA or what? Yeah, I have one. Man, I haven't really thought about how we're gonna do that, but are you gonna do what? It's actually TA um, in this way. Electronic signatures? No. Okay. <laughs> is um, it verbal is a verbal TA <coughs> as legal? Yes, I mean I think so. I mean ultimately it's it's a whole total contract package together that you know I think I think we can verbally agree to it and then I'm still going to put them all together and um, what I can do we know we can put them all together in, in one big email and look at them together and make sure that we're on the same page and not move forward till I get your agreement and you get mine that this is what this is what we have agreed to. Okay, how about we do it? Why don't you why don't you sign it? Email it to me. I'll sign it. Email it back. We both have copies. Okay. Yeah. Until we can figure out a better way. Yeah, I agree. Copy sign. You could use DocuSign if you wanted. I don't know if y'all. Yeah. No, I do. I, I have it on Adobe Pro. I know I have it, so I, I can DocuSign. Yeah, whatever you want to do, we're okay with that. Okay. We'll TA this one. Okay. I'm gonna go to the next one. And this one is actually something that you, you brought to our attention before we started contract negotiations. Hold on, sorry. Can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah, let me get it to one page and then I'm gonna zoom in. Um, 
Um, for just for simplicity purposes, I know this is two different articles, but since it's, it was really the same issue, um, I went ahead and just put it together rather than just creating multiple more pieces of paperwork. Um, you have brought it to our attention that non-operational firefighters are on 410 schedules, accrual rates were being calculated at the non-operation firefighters on an eight hour schedule. And that really was done because the contract was missing this bullet. Um, so the, you know, when payroll and finance um, put in their kind of their formulas into the, into their system and create their formulas and how um, hours are going to be calculated and processed, they use the contract. So they had the 12 hour and they had the eight hour. Um, somewhere along the lines when we added in the 410 schedule, that wasn't accounted for here. Even though in other areas like holiday, um, holidays, it is accounted for. I'm not too sure why, but uh, you brought that to our attention. And we have finance and payroll in the process of actually already correcting this. They're working with HR and identifying which form 12s for those non-operation firefighters are on the 410 schedule versus the eight-hour schedule. Uh, they're working closely with Chief Quintero and making sure that they're identifying exactly who um, fits into this category here and moving forward. I believe by the time we have this contract signed, that should already be in place and make sure that everybody's getting the right accrual rate. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and add it into the contract specifically uh, just in case of administration changes, we get new people in payroll, we get anybody new in finance, that when they go back to the contract and refer to it there, it's there and it's clear. Okay, can I make a point? Mm -hmm. Can you go back up? Yes, sorry. Um, in both of those bullets, it says for non-operations firefighters, did you make the distinction of a 410 schedule? Should you make the distinction of a 5 8 schedule? Yeah, we can do that. Just so it's very clear. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. I guess you would do that in section six as well. And yeah. below it, do it again. The dragon. Or the dragon. And then I'll tab it up and get it all cleaned up. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll make those changes. I'm just gonna match it. I think you may have to do that same thing down in the vacation section too. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll clean that up. Okay. So that makes sense. I'm going to change this around too. That way, it just all reads the same. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll play with that. I'll, I'll clean that up on break. I just have the concept in there, and then I'll. Play is, that it it on the, um, is that it on the vacation? There was no other page. I didn't catch it in any other areas. If you catch it, let me know. I went through um, and identified those in, in 16 and 17. I saw it correct in holidays. Um, I didn't see it anywhere else. If, if you do identify and let me know and we'll just add it in there. That's the goal is to address it wherever it needs to be addressed. Okay, yeah, that's gonna say, I think the other section John just pointed out would probably be personally. 
personal ways, okay? What page are you on? Uh, page 38. It defines a working day, non operations as eight hours, and that's yes. it's not wrong, it's just depends on what schedule you're on. Okay, I'll add in 18 here too. So I'm just going to make a comment to myself. And you don't have to worry about in part D, it, it's already done for us. So 10 hour blocks for 410, eight hour blocks for 5A. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely address I mean, some areas. There's a question on this, Lily. And I mean, from what we've done so far on that section or, or that issue, we're, we can TA that one too if you want. But the last question I have on that issue is um, Have you guys, has, has payroll or whoever finance thought about what does this affect anybody's cap, their vacation cap, because of the difference in the accrual? Do you know? I don't know. Um... Chief Quintero, are you on? I don't know if that's something that they've looked at or not. Tell people. It hasn't been uh, it hasn't been addressed specifically as that, but anytime you have a different a different uh, frequency of accrual or expenditure, it's going to affect um, how much you end up in the bank. It doesn't affect the cap per se, and that the number is a solid is a is a number. It's not it's not uh, leaning onto the schedule. It's just the flat out. Number four, as an example, the the cap on sick leave. Okay. So obviously, if you're earning at a higher at a higher accrual rate, then yeah, you'll reach the cap sooner. And unless you utilize it for whatever reason, you probably would have have uh, hours left. But again, that's that's not uh, dependent on the cap itself. That's dependent on the accrual rate. We we understand that. <laughs> if um, if you're making those changes and you're going to add the personal leave to it, right? Or yes. Any section that's going to require, and I think those are the three that will require it. Then uh, we're we're comfortable with that. Okay. Okay. Can you give me one second? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, let me just save that. I'll make those changes. I'll resend it to you. That way you see it and make sure you're comfortable. Um, yeah. We're going to TA that. We're going to TA the drug policy. Yes. TA. Yes. Uh, what was the other one? I think that, well, that's all I brought for today. Um, hopefully we're going to TA a lot today. I think we're going to see the whole deal. I hope so. So that moving, yeah, that being said. Um, we, we actually, we want to see that the insurance as we've agreed today, okay. making those few changes. We'd like to see those uh, spreadsheets. I guess we'll call them number seven. Okay. Uh, number six with the updated information. You know, I think it's, and it's not a whole lot that needs to be added in there, but it, it did change a little bit. I think you need to put your your rates as they're going to be, just so we can see it. Okay. Um, and I don't mind doing that. What, but what I would like to do, just so that I can make sure I've got kind of everybody working, so I can work on the healthcare um, language and additions on there. Um, but I'd like to, if y'all are ready, really kind of get Eddie involved, and um, that way, if if we take a break, so that I can work on the healthcare and get y'all that updated draft. I'd like to see if y'all have anything for him to look at and that way we're kind of working at the same time rather than just selling out on one piece of this piece of the time. Um, yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't see any issues with that. Um, okay. You've actually worked on a few things for us already and I feel, I feel comfortable in our 
our man. So, okay. um, give me one second, okay? Okay. Hey, Lilia. Yes. Okay, so it's 11 o'clock, right? You guys mm -hmm. eat lunch, we gotta eat lunch, we need to take a break. We could probably give Eddie a little bit of homework. Okay. He's gonna earn his money today. That's right. Um, if I sent you, if I sent you three, Wage scales. Eddie could cost them, right? Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you what they are, right? That's one percent, whatever that numbers are. But I just need Eddie to tell me how much they cost. Is that possible? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to send them to you as wage scales, <clears throat> and then do we need to do this on camera? I'm going to tell you what they are. Um, yeah, and then still send it to me. That way, I can just email them. Email them to him. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Should you find it first? Yeah, give me give me one second, Lily. I make sure. Let me make sure I bring up the right one. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's a blind squirrel from tonight. Not dumb. You don't want to share that. You don't want to share that. Yeah, this one, right? 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 This one,
Okay, Lilia. All right. Mania, I'm going to share a screen with you. Okay. We want to do number three, right? Are you you're just showing them to them right now? So I'm just I'm just showing you one, Lily. It's in no particular order. Okay. Okay. So this is one of the wage scales that we've worked up. And you'll notice that we have the uh, of course the 84 month step is in there in year one. And other than that, nothing changes in year one. And then year two is a 1%, year three is a 275, and year four is a 3%. <clears throat> so I'm going to send these to you. There's three of them. Okay. But I want to show you, I want to show you one other one because it's a little bit complicated. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that I can explain it without you having the sheet in front of you, but we're going to see, all right? <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to. I want to share the number one. That Lilia? Yeah. Okay. So this is this is another wage scale, and although it looks the same, you're going to notice a remarkable difference in the first year. So we we added the four the 84 month. But we also added a 1% to the 120 only. From there, it's going to be 1%, 2%, And <clears throat> I'll send these over to you. And Eddie can work on them. OK. So you said year one, add, add the 84 month step and add 1% to the 120 month step. Right. Okay. And, then, and that's just in year one. From there, it's 1%, 2%, 2%. This is okay. the most difficult one. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna send those to you and uh, we wanna break till noon or something. I think that works. If we need some more time or something else, I'll I'll reach out to you, let you know. But that that gives me some time and let me just uh, get Eddie get Eddie involved. So. We'll we'll plan on breaking till noon and uh, okay. need more time. Let us know. I'll send these over to you um, as soon as we have the costing on those types of proposals. I think we can figure out. From there, how the rest of the package is going to look for us. Okay, that makes sense. I think it, it, it goes real smooth once we get that and okay. see the insurance, how it's written, how we agreed to today. Okay, I will work on that and I'll we'll come back on at noon. If we need a little more time, I'll reach out to you and let you know. Okay, I'm just going to put us on mute and. Yeah, we will as well. I think everybody here is already on mute, so it'll. I'll just mute myself, take myself off, and then um, let's stay on. All right. We can answer. Just uh, just text me on my phone or something. Okay, and I'm gonna uh, let Rick know that we're taking a taking a break. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Did you want to go through the um, healthcare stuff first, or do you want to talk about the um, sheets that I just sent you uh, based upon Eddie's calculations? Uh, let's go through the healthcare. Okay. Are we recording? Yes. Yeah, we're up. Okay, just want to make sure. Let me. Uh, Let me send this to Barbara so she can print this for me.
Okay. 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 Um, let me go through my notes real quick right here. Okay, I'm not, I'm going to start off with saying this is a, um, still a draft because I know there's still probably some cleanup that we're going to need to do to it, especially organizational, organizational wise. Um, it was a lot to task in a very short time period. So I, you know, did the best that we could, but I wanted to be able to at least look at something and conceptually, hopefully we can agree to that and, and start working off of it. Although I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident this is the bulk of it. I, I think there might be some changes here or there. Uh, um, one of the first things that we talked about addressing was. Hey, Lilia, can you zoom uh -huh. in on me? Yes. Is that good? There you go. Okay. One of the first things that we talked about addressing was um, more organization to the the um, you know now that we have more than one plan you know making sure that we identify each plan option and then identify the formulary for premiums that make sure that it addresses both of them so what we went ahead and did was make section B so I mean sorry section one is our health care plans sub B, a paragraph sub B here section B is the PPO plan and then C will be the uh, CDHP plan. And then I, and while we we'll get there, I think it's D will be the formula. No, actually, no, D. We moved the formulary totally out of it. So it's actually in a separate section five, but we'll get there. Okay, so B is the same. You see that here, rather than it saying, you know, outlined in this article, we have outlined in section five of this article. I still don't know whether I want it in section five or if I want it in this section one, just as a subsection, I think it would be at that point E or F. Um, that's more for formatting and just easier following, um, not necessarily changes anything substantively. Um, but to get something out here and to be able to keep moving forward, I just, we just put it in a separate section for now. So section five of this article is the premium formulary. We have completely removed the um, OPEB gas V, the fund balance language here. One of the things that we wanted to do was make sure that we separated the plans. So like I told you that B is the PPO, C will be the CDHP, and I believe E will actually be, well, when we get there, just remember exactly where it's at, will be anything related to the fund balance. So because the fund balance will apply to both plans, we went ahead and put it afterwards. Um, so that way each plan is separated by its premium cost and its structure. And then we'll talk about the fund balance. So all of this language is completely removed. This is the plan structure for the PPO plan. Sorry, give me just a second real quick. Sorry, I want my kids to calm down. Um, so this is the plan structure for the, C, the PPO plan. Then we should move into C. So we're still under section one, but now we're in C, which is the CDHP plan. Okay. Premiums will be outlined first under subsection little a. Then subsection little b, just like in the PPO plan, we'll have the plan structure for the CDHP. 
they can see. This hasn't changed. You say the same. All right, D is where, remember, you've asked us to remove um, OPEP and GASB from your calculation, premium calculations, and so forth. And we did that above. But of course, OPEP liability is still a requirement for the city that has to be um, fulfilled each year. So we're still acknowledging it here. There it is. So I'm going to just go up this second and leave it right here. We've created, so we're still under section one. We've went through the PPO structure, went through the CDHP structure, and now we're in D, which is the um, OPEB, what we've titled right now, OPEB liability requirements and fund balance elements. Um, just outlining how the, okay. The first part here is just outlining how the OPEB liability is going to be met each year because it's still a requirement for the city, even though we're removing it from your contract. And um, we've just any future liability funding requirements will be managed through the city's portion of the fund balance. You asked us to outline what is included or what makes up the fund balance. And we have broken it up into these three. A, B, and C, plan assets, plan liabilities, catastrophic, and IBNR reserve balance. Do you have any questions there? Um, I mean, nothing jumps out at me, but. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, no, nothing jumps out at me. Okay. So that, that addresses still the OPEB liability, although it, the city, how the city is going to be handling it, funding it, and then addresses the um, elements of the fund balance. So that's D. Oh, sorry, I clicked off. E, retiree health insurance. There we go. All right, section two. Life insurance and premiums, section three, the dental options. So one of the things, and I don't know how you all feel about this, but I was trying to not only organize this in a way, since we're going to have both options offered, at least in this first year, um, but also to make sure that it's not confusing. So right now, the dental plan was the Corpus Christi Firefighters Dental Plan. Dental plan. Um, I've, I've changed it. Again, we have to keep it that way. I'm just you know, trying to organize it and so that there's no confusion. One is the association supplemental dental plan and the other is gonna be the city, um, the city dental plan. So let's see, I have this first on a paragraph here in section three just outlines the two options um, beginning during the open enrollment period for this upcoming fiscal year, 2021. We'll offer two options for dental coverage. However, firefighters may only elect one option each fiscal year. During open enrollment, a firefighter can elect to participate in either the city's dental insurance plan, which is gonna be outlined below, or to participate in the association supplemental dental, dental plan, which also be outlined below. However, in either selection, the most the city will contribute is $30 per month per firefighter. And then this next part is what, what I, we addressed is that we don't want people making changes mid-year into one option or the other. Um, so that if, if you, you know, once you do elect a plan, you, you have to stay in that plan for the duration of that uh, plan year. But if you're in the city's dental plan and you have a qualifying life event, you can change between tiers of the city's dental insurance plan, but you can't try to go into the supplemental plan or vice versa, supplemental plan to the cities. Okay. okay. So I have option one as the association supplemental plan. This really is just a <laughs> language from the contract that's already exists. Um, just added a little bit to explain that it's those who elect to participate in this plan, then the city will contribute the $30 per month. Option two, 
Oops, sorry. I went ahead of myself. Option two, city's dental insurance plan. Um, just, you know, the city will contribute $30 to, per month to those firefighters who elect to participate in the city's dental insurance plan. And I just wanted to make sure it was clear that the city's that $30 monthly contribution will be applied to the employee's portion of the premium tier. So we know that, that once the $30 is applied, you can kind of see the breakout here to the side when you look at the premiums that the additional is sorry. Um, so that's the remaining portion, the $2.76 is what's remaining after the um, breakout on the, um, <clears throat> after the contribution for the $30 per month. Okay. The rest stays the same. Um, hey, Lily, real quick, did you, it seems like it should have been in that section up above that, did you Put in there about the 75 percent. It's coming. I, I got it. Yeah, it's coming. Um, so I'm going to go through that real quick. All right. So I just have an option for removal. So kind of playing with this language. Again, I was um, running out of time here. So I just have option for removal of association supplemental dental plan. If enrollment in the city's dental plan is greater than 75% for fiscal year 2021, then the parties agree to remove option one uh, from the agreement and solely offer option two, city's dental insurance plan moving forward during the duration of this agreement. And then just that kind of that last thing you had thrown in by mutual agreement, the parties can agree to remove option one, even if enrollment was not greater than 75% at the end of the plan year. So. Um, that's dental. Vision stayed the same here. This is the sec new section five, which is, again, I'm still thinking of moving it into section one, just adding it as an, I don't know, whatever the next letter would be, F or G, um, but I wanted to do, see it. Um, this is section five, which is the premium formularies, and we broke it up uh, for medical premiums and then dental premiums. So it's nothing new that what we used to be up in the PPO area, except for, which is what we've already talked about numerous times, we've removed number eight, which was the um, uh, calculation of GASB into the premium. Yeah. That's nothing new there. And then in the dental premiums, ah, sorry, I apologize. We've, how that's calculated, it's much simpler than, than the uh, medical. On the uh, on the city's uh, dental, is that how they do premiums? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that is, you know, I believe what we talked about again. I know there's probably still some organizational um, stuff that needs to go into here, making sure that all the sections, subsections, and sub paragraphs and subsections all kind of match up and blend together. Um, but it should, you know, conceptually, this is, this is it. Okay, can you scroll to the fund balance portion real quick? Sure. Is Ramon on the, on the call? Yes, he is. Yes, sir, I'm here. Hey, Ramon, how are you? Good, man, love to see your face again. Um, yeah, what happened there? I don't know, let me look. Where y'all going? Where'd y'all go? El Jefe. Hmm. Oh, my bad. Hey, uh, Sorry about that. Hey, uh, when when we talk about the fund balance under under section D here. And I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, and I don't expect you to know this answer, but if this was our plan today, what's our fund balance? Uh, here, let me go back to where we were. I believe you would, and I would ballpark it. I would ballpark it to around 
Uh, just shy of a million, 987,000 is uh, okay. the ballpark number that I would put it in. Okay. Okay, that's good. All right. Thank you. Yes, yep. sir. Johnny, this is a recent draft that I sent you. So, you know, I guess that I'll, if I make any changes, any other additional cleanup changes, of course, you know, if there's anything of substantive, you'll know beforehand. I don't anticipate it, but any cleanup changes, I'll send it your way. Yeah, I think conceptually we're, we're on the same. <laughs> yeah. You got COVID or? Okay. You okay? Okay. Okay, um, so next you want to, let's see, I think we have Eddie on now. So if you want to go through the Excel sheets. Yeah, can we, can we do that real quick? Say that again? Yeah, you can't hear me? No, I can now. Sorry, I just broke out for a second. And maybe something wrong. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Give me one second, Lillian. Okay.
what we're doing is Okay, Lillian. All right. Sorry about that. No, it's fine. Okay. You can have Eddie go through these, I guess. Okay. Um, Eddie, do you want me to share it and can have you walk through it or do you want to share it? Either one. Uh, I have it ready. Whatever's easier. Eddie? Just a second. <laughs> okay. There he is. All right. Do you want me to share the screen, Eddie, and then you can talk about it? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, scenario Scenario one had the uh, a one percent increase for the one twenty step, right? Yes, sir. Okay, we had like 197 firefighters in that category from the sheet, from the information that we had. Was that the entire four years? Uh, well, we, yeah, and that was a couple hundred thousand a year. The 1% for the, is what okay. we calculated for the 120 month step. Okay. So each one of, yeah. And then I'm going to let Camille talk a little bit about that because he was doing that while I was doing something else. The 84, the 84 month step. Yes, sir. Okay, so on the 84 month step, Lillian, can you? Uh, does she have the? Okay, so the 80 month, 84 month step with the scenario one. You're um, so for fiscal year 21, based on the time that the positions enter the the the, the individuals right. enter the rank, we're looking at 30, uh, 30, 30 individuals in year one, which is one firefighter, 19 firefighters, two, 10 captains that are going to hit in fiscal year 21, the 84, which based on the scenario one, uh, between 30 months and 84 month change, you're looking at $101,748 decrease uh, for all of those uh, individuals in year one. Uh, the big, the biggest being the firefighter two, of course. Yes, that's the biggest change because it goes from five thousand uh, five hundred eighty-three to five thousand nine hundred twenty-nine dollars. Okay. It's the biggest increase, so it's one hundred one thousand dollars, well, almost one hundred two thousand dollars for year one. Uh, in year two, you do not have that many new firefighters that would reach that level. Uh, there's only four, one firefighter, one, one firefighter, two, one captain, one battalion chief. So in year two, uh, you have to account, of course, the 101 from the previous year plus additional $10,000 for year two. So year two is not that dramatic. Year three, we're hitting again, we have uh, one firefighter, one, 17 firefighter, two, six captains and four battalion chiefs. So that's adding another 97,000, almost $98,000 in expense in year three. In year four, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, and in year four, you have the biggest uh, group uh, of individuals that will hit that 84 mark, 84 month mark, which is one firefighter one, 31 firefighter twos, the six captains and one battalion ship, one battalion chief. So that equates to $154,000. So if you look at the year one, two, and three costs, that's how it breaks down. So you have the uh, additional, uh, so it, it's a combination 
you, you can click without, it's over here. Click over here and then bring up that one and then click on that one. Yeah, so year one was the initial 120. Uh, with retirement. Oh, with retirement. Okay, with retirement, it's $124,875 for year one with the step plus the $200,000 for the additional 1%. For the 120. For the, for the, uh, for the one, yes, for the 120 for the one. Then the next uh, next year, you have the initial 124 plus another, mm. I believe it's like what, $11,000. So it's 137207 for year two plus the 200000 the following year, it's uh, with retirement, it's 257, 417 costs and the 200,000. And then the year following that is 446,795 and the 200,000. So for a grand total over four years is 1,766,294. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know if you And then scenario three, basically conceptually is the same thing. The amount of people did not change We're using the same because of the, the, the positions and the who's going to get it didn't change. Just the amounts are a little bit less uh, and they're spread out a little bit. The, the, the costs are not as uh, are not as high. So as you can see, uh, it, it's not as much on the, plus you don't have that 1% beginning year one. So the costs are, are less, but the calculation basically is the same for all of those. Okay. I mean, uh... Looks good to us. We appreciate you guys doing that. Is okay. um, Lily, is Michael on the line? Yes. Yes, sir. Hey, Michael, you doing okay? Yes, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing great, sir. Um, is either scenario one or scenario three okay with you? Yeah, we haven't uh, been able to talk to, talk about it as a team quite yet, but yeah, they look good so far. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, I think we're trying to we're trying to work with you guys and get through 85, 95 percent today. Mm -hmm. You're OK with either either one of those scenarios? Yes, sir. OK, sounds good to us. Okay, Lilia. You want to take a break and then? Yeah, can you give us about five or 10 minutes? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Just start talking when you're back on. I'll be on. Okay. okay. Will do. Hey, Lilia. Yes, sir. Okay, you ready? Yep. <laughs> That's a joke, Lily. Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, we appreciate you guys doing that for us. So that's uh, that's pretty much done. Can we talk about? Um, Can we talk about longevity real quick? I just want to give one more number, and I think I think we know what we're, where we're at. Okay. Did Eddie? And I think he did. I just want to I want to verify the number. Did Eddie price out longevity at twelve fifty? Yes. Can he um, use that real quick? Eddie, if you have it, I'm pulling it, but if you have it readily available, feel free to chime in. No, he sent it to me though. Eddie, are you on? 
He took a lunch break. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Let me go find that one. Okay, I think it, it, I'll double check it. So Johnny, hold on. Let me have him double check. But I think I have two million six ninety five four twenty three. Okay, we're done. We're good. So I just want to make sure that's right, John. Uh, yeah, it is. It's right. Hey, Lillian? Yes. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take a break. It's going to be about 15 minutes. All I need to do is just put it together. Okay. Before we do that, it'll be economics, okay? Before before we do that, can we talk about, um, number one, military leave? Okay. And I, I think we've been talking about this already. We're going to propose, um, you want me to bring it up on the screen? Yeah. All right, give me one second, okay? I can send you this if you want me to, or if you want to wait till after we're done. Can you see that? Yes. You need me to zoom in or anything? No, no, it's fine. Ooh. That's too big. So what we're going to propose is 300 hours. Um, we, we feel that that's comparable with what other city employee, um, other cities and other employees in the Corpus Christi have. I think okay. It was so like 25 days. Okay, because you had 360, right? So you're reducing it to 300. Yeah. Yeah. From, from what we've talked to you guys about, I think we're we're good at, at 300 hours. Okay. Um, let me ask Eddie to okay. run that and see what it looks like. We know what it looks like for 360, so we'll, we'll look at that. Okay. That's 25 days. I think PD's got 24. Most cities have 25 or 30. 24 to 30. Okay. Yeah, I have this article. I just have um, from the first one that you sent. So, yeah. If uh, if you guys are good with three hundred hours, if you just want to put it in a TA format, we're good with that too. So however, you want to do it. Okay. Um, let me look at it because I know you know we know that this cost associated to it over the four years at three sixty was two hundred eighty two thousand. So let me have them cost it out and we'll hold it off to the side. I know we want to do something with military, but we'll hold it off to the side, depending on the rest of what y'all package together. Okay, so it did have a cost. Say that again? It did have a cost. Oh yeah, yeah. 282? 282. Okay. Johnny, can you hold on for just a second? Um, my, my, I gotta look, my kid. Mother, yeah. mother, mother duty, real quick. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry, guys.
Okay, I apologize. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, uh, Lilia, on the military leave, mm -hmm. was it 282 above what they pay now, or is that in addition to? Uh, let me ask Eddie for some uh, clarification on that. That I'm not sure. It seems a little much, is why we're asking. Eddie, do you recall on that? I'm multitasking here. What the military leave? Yes, the the 282, 203 that you had originally costed out. Is that in addition, or does that include the um, number that they already, I guess, received that's already being budgeted? Let me, let me, let me look to, to verify that. Okay. So go on and not. Okay. Uh, we can double check on that, Johnny. I can get you. <laughs> okay. okay. While he's checking on that, Lily, I want to share another this is actually going to be a new proposal. We don't okay. think economic. Um, let me let me find it real quick. All right, this is going to be on a uh, promotion. Article 22. Right here, section eight on the life of promotion, promotional eligibility lists. We want to talk to the city about going to lists that are uh, given every year, regardless of uh, vacancy or not, in the ranks of firefighter. Two EMS driver and captain. Instead of what we do now is there has to be a vacancy before they give an exam. What what it will do is it will basically put the tests on a schedule, and I'm just going to use the month of January as an example. I'm not saying it has to be January, but. Um, Every employee would know that in the ranks of EMS2, engineer, and captain, those tests are given every year in, in a certain month. Let's say March the 1st. Right now, we test only upon vacancy. Yeah, I mean, it's we test almost every year, but sometimes it's you know thirteen months, fourteen months. Um, but the va but the vacancy is the trigger. But the vacancy is the trigger. Yeah, a lot of departments do it this way. They give tests on an annual basis instead of when there's a vacancy. And we think it just gives the employee the ability to plan better, study. They know when to study. They don't have to try to cram everything in the last 45 days or so. And it'll also allow for the, the quick filling of a vacancy. That's, that's one thing, you know, that's a, an advantage. You'll always have a valid list. Uh, Chief Urban, Chief Quintero, do y'all have anything um that you can think of immediate or any questions, uh, just off the top of your head on that? Yeah, so, the only, I, I, there is some advantage of that. 
you know, we do have our retirements are usually in January. So that's when usually our tests uh, start getting uh, triggered. And then they usually go about uh, March, April timeframe. So if you already planted a test in January, you can immediately fill those positions and there'll be less of a time uh, in between. The only issue I'd have with that is to leave um, some language to be able to, to uh, have a test when a list uh, is e exhausted. So the, the list that, that usually happens to is the Firefighter 2 EMS. Um, so we'll give a test and list will exhaust. We do promote everybody on that list and we still have vacancies. Um, so that, that would be the only kind of issue I'd have with that. It usually would occur in a Firefighter 2 EMS uh, position. Okay. And then read through it, Lily, you'll notice that that provision is still in there that if, if there's not a list, uh, you, can, you can give a test. So, and so what happens in that regard, if there is a, let's say we exhaust the list and uh, there's already an active list in January, do you forego that list? Does it expire or do you exhaust that list and then go to the new list? It'll go into accordance with our current CBA 143. Once the list is exhausted, you refer back to that and you would plan the test as according in the contract now. Um, this is just a stipulation that Test will be given every year, regardless if the list is exhausted or not. If the list does exhaust, for example, in your EMS2 position, which happens quite frequently, we still host a test and fill those positions either way because it's currently in our CDA and 143. The provision is still in our state and that we follow those guidelines as well. Hey, Chief Urban. Yes. Are you asking that if you give a test in January and that list is not expired in March, you give another test? No. What I'm asking is, let's say we gave a, we gave a test in January. Uh, the list exhausted uh, due to promotions or uh, we promoted everybody on that list. It was exhausted. And uh, a vacancy occurs in, let's say, September. We give a less, we give a test in, you know, uh, December. Now let's say we so we give a test due to the vacancy in September, uh, and the list is exhausted, but it's still active in January. Do you give it? I mean, does that list expire at the end of the year, regardless of uh, when it was given? If there was, let's say, I see, yeah, I see what you're saying. No, one forty three says that the list is good, and the contract says that the list is good for three hundred sixty five days. So do you still give another test right. in January? That's, yeah, I think that's what he's asking. So if you're, if let's say uh -huh. January was our no. date. No, if, if you're saying that you have a list and it's exhausted, well then there's currently no longer a list due to it being exhausted and filling the positions. So that's currently the city will follow the current 143 whenever this expires or it becomes exhausted. And you'll take- We can't really hear uh, that, Jason. Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't really hear you. I apologize. Yeah, so that last, the last sentence in there, the city will follow the civil service 140, or excuse me, in the, in the event of the promotional list is expired due to exhaustion, the city will follow the civil service 143 according to the CBA. Other ranks will conduct testing as needed for operating in accordance with the CBA. So exactly what you're saying, if you give a test in January uh, for a firefighter two, uh, and we need to fill so let's, for example, 12 positions, but we only have eight people in the past, well, then that, loss, that list then becomes exhausted. So we still have four positions that need to be filled. So yes, sir, you would be uh, producing another test just like you normally would. There's no stipulations uh, preventing you from doing that. However, they are in there to allow you to do that. Okay, so you would, okay, but would, if you had an active list in January, would you give another one in January or would you wait until that list was uh, expired? You would give, right. you would give the, the new test within the, okay. at the end of the 365 days when that list expires, not due to exhaustion, but just ex expiration. Okay, because one of the things that I thought y'all said was we wanted to get this annually. Can y'all hear me? 
Sorry, I'm getting a lot of questions. Okay, we wanted to give tests annually so that there was some consistency when guys would know, okay, they need to study, they need to be ready, this is when they're gonna test, right? But what Chief Urban is saying is, let's say that that date was, was February 1. And, but before February 1, so like you said, back in September, the year before, so let's just say, let's say, let's say we started doing this February 1 of next year, so February 21, but in September of this year, um, we had a vacancy and we needed a test. And that test fills that vacancy, but they're still, but it's still active and still um, good for a year. Would we still give a test in February? No, no, no. Yeah, because this according to this this guideline here, you would give a test after the 30 days of the initial list expired. So yes, you could possibly give a test in February, but it would be say instead of February 1st, it would be like February 27th after the list is, is expired. But that test in September would be good through September 21, right? Or until it's exhausted, of course. I guess, I guess in that scenario, you wouldn't, your consistency in an argument would go out the door because you wouldn't, you wouldn't keep testing when you didn't need a list, right? Yeah, Lilia, what it's saying is, is that it may not always be in the same month, but it'll always be at least annually. And so when you give a test, that list is used until either it expires or is exhausted. And another test will be given within 31 days after that list either expires or is exhausted. Mm -hmm. So it may, these tests may not all be in the same month. There's no okay. specific month. But it'll at least be given annually. Is that or uh, is that what? Am I correct in that, uh, Johnny? Yes, sir. So yeah. So the idea that they're always going to be given in January or February is is, is not the case. Um, okay. What, I what, remember what, hearing consistency yeah, so and planning and all that it, other stuff. Yeah. It, it, uh, well, they'll know when it expires, um, and uh, they can plan. If the list is being exhausted, they'll at least have some plan. So. The, most likely, the, the ranks of captain, engineer, uh, and uh, uh, is it uh, capital case? So the battalion chief is only given when needed, but likely the case of the engineer and the captain, they'll likely only be given once a year, not probably January or February. Uh, that's when the list is usually um, uh, started because of retirement. Uh, but a firefighter to EMS may be given at another time because it, that test is prone to exhaustion. The other okay. two normally- Can you give me one second, Julia? Yeah. She's on me to cut you off. Give me one second. So they, yeah. So it's, it's, it's just guaranteeing that a list is, a test is given at least once a year and uh, that they're able to plan. And okay. Okay.
Hey, Lillian. Are you going to bring up the EMS points? Yes, sir. I think Chief Urban understands what we want to do, and I think as written, I mean, you can look at it many different ways, but the Firefighter 2 EMS test is basically given on an as-needed basis. If you give a test in September and you still have a list from February, you're not given the test. You, you still have to follow 143, and that list either has to, one, be expired, or two, be exhausted. What we're, what we're trying to say is that on, on that test, on a firefighter two specifically, you will give a test immediately whether there's a vacancy or not. That's what it's trying to say. Okay. There, there'll, ne there'll never be an overlapping test. That's not allowable under the statute. So I, I think Chief Urban gets it. And I think he kind of probably explained it to you. Um, if you could just look at it, maybe. Okay. No, yeah. Better language than we did. Okay. No, I don't think it's going to be an issue. And yeah, we'll 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 talk okay. about it here shortly. Okay. I got just a couple more things, and then we're going to take a break. And I need about twenty or thirty minutes. Okay. Um, on the president's leave, uh, the PL taking of the PL. Yeah. We kind of already conceptually agreed on on basically. Well, let me ask. Um, is Michael here? Yes. He yes, yes, sir. Um, you know, we had talked about we don't we don't like paying for something we don't even know what we're paying for yet. We don't know that number until January, actually December the twentieth. But we pay for it in August. What we want to do is make the election and then we pay the next August. So. Right now we pay up front, we want to pay, we want to pay a receipt, that's what we want to do. Uh, Johnny, I have to I have to read through that one more time. I um, I know we talked about that at, this at the beginning, so I just have to refresh my memory. Yeah, Johnny, you mind maybe walking through it just to the scenario again, just yeah. um, that, that way. So what happens it. right now, today, actually, in about two weeks, you're gonna take six and a half hours out of every member, every firefighter's personal leave plan for something that you don't know is gonna happen yet. And you're gonna take that out on August the 1st and the president doesn't make that election until December the 20th. And I may go back to the trucks. In that case, if I went back to the trucks, you would have to give back the six and a half hours of personal leave to every member. Now, if I if I stay on a 40 hour work schedule, then the members pay, you know, my base salary. Um, problem is, is that if I don't, then you gotta refund that, that PL. Where it becomes a real problem is if, let's say on August the 1st, I decided I wanna go back to the trucks, which I can do once a year, I can make that election then you have to refund a pro rata share of the PL back to the members, which I'm just gonna say would be two hours, yet they can't take it because we're not in that year anymore. Our PL runs August 1 to July 31st. We think the simple solution is instead of taking the money up front, Take it like a receipt, you know, take it the following year, the year I make the election. The other option to that is if the president was to change his election during the year and it's before August, you know, the guys get the time and they hopefully get to use it. But if it's made after August, you just credit it back to their vacation instead of their PL bank. I think I covered it. Yeah, I think so. Um, let me see. Um, we might want to talk yeah. with um, yeah, payroll a little bit. While, while you are on break, Johnny, we might uh, go ahead and try to maybe reach out to finance on that and payroll and just see about any issues off the top of their head that they could forecast, foresee. Okay. So. Inside that same article, 
Article two, eight. I think we I think we already talked about this, but the pension meetings. I think we might have even T eight it already. Um, going from two to five, and then changing it from state only to state or national pensions pension meetings. It's uh, number F, William, section three. Oh. Okay. Pension board meeting is three. Pension trustees will be allowed to make sure to attend any. You said y'all had something, you pushed something across on that? Let me just look at my notes. Oh, we did. And if not, I will. No, you Somebody might talk about it. Yeah, we gave it to you probably the first time we met. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I see that now. Yeah. I'm see if we did see anything. Yeah. Yeah, we, I don't think we TA'd it. Okay. We agreed conceptually, I think. Or... All right. And then. I guess one of the last things, Lilia, is Chief Quintero here. I know he, he had some things to say about it, but we remember we brought up the uh, the EMS points on the uh, driver's exam? Yes. We want to get rid of it. And I, I do believe that we submitted a proposal to get rid of the points. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I remember having that conversation also. Um, let me touch base with them and we'll get you a response on that. Okay. I didn't, yeah, it's been a while, but I'll, I'll we'll touch yeah. base on that. Okay, we're uh, um, trying to get before, to you in 30 minutes. Well, Johnny, before you do, um, I had a chance to talk with Eddie real quick. Okay. Um, while y'all are on break, hold on, I lost my notes here. Okay. So for you asked about the 360 hour, the 282 um, cost that we have previously given you, that did that is additional and on top of what's already being received. So that's not, you know. Okay. So you asked if that included it or not or anything else. That would be additional monies. Okay, you said 360. Right. Did you mean so, 380? I mean uh, 300. No. Okay. So that's what we'll go to next. So then he priced out the. Did I not write that down? Hold on, sorry. He priced out the 300 and I thought I wrote that down. Eddie, I'm sorry, you said 217? Right, 217. 217 for the 300. Eddie, do you know how many guys that is? That That's for 15. 15. 15, okay. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll see you in about 20 minutes. 20, 30 minutes. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, Johnny, I'm back when, when you're ready. New trailer done. Okay, Lilia, we're here. All right. Did you get accomplished what you needed to get accomplished? I think so, you know. Okay. I'm pretty productive. Yes, ma'am. We're, we're feeling very productive too. Today's a uh, good day, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, so. You know, you've given us the pricing for wage proposals. We've talked about some other non-economic stuff. Did you get my email about the military leave and the pension mm -hmm. meeting leave? Probably. Hold on. Let me get to my email here. Okay. If not, I can resend them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're there. Okay. I'm sorry about okay. that. You have sent it. Yes. 
Okay, so I think what we want to do is we're going to just submit a, a package for every other every other uh, ad pay that we're going to be asking for. So I'm going to share my screen and and I'm actually when I send it to you, Lily, I'm going to send you two files. One's going to be the actual Article 10. The second one's going to be um, basically our cost breakdown of it. I'll send it to you. Okay. You can kind of see where we're coming from and um, what we're costing everything at. And okay. It's really, really, really close to what you guys are doing. Just as an example on longevity, y'all priced it out at uh, $2,695,423. Yes. We priced it out at $2.7 million. All right, we'll take your $5. Let's put on there. Yeah, take, take our $5. So if you want to just use our numbers, we're good with that. OK. OK. Good. So you said you're going to email uh, both of those, or are you going to share them? Sorry. I'm that was a joke, Lilia. I'm going to send them to you. I was asking you, since we were so close on all of our numbers, you just want to use our numbers? Oh, without seeing them. Sorry, you broke out there for a second. I didn't catch it. No, uh, yeah. no. I'm not that comfortable with it. I'm only yeah. comfortable with it if it's higher than what I'm estimating. Then yes, I'm, I'm good with it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to put up uh, Article 10 is what I'm going to put up. Okay. That's fine. Nope. So this is Article 10. You want me to email it to you real quick? Yeah, if you don't mind. Give me one second, okay? Sure. Give me one second, okay? Okay. Okay, sorry about that. That's fine. Let me, I'm going to email you the file first and then I'm going to bring it up. Let me just make sure it's the right one, William. Okay, it's in it's in transit. All right. So now I'm gonna share on my screen. Let me know when you got it. Okay. There it is. Okay. Give us a second. If you want to share that with your team, that's totally up to you. All right. 
Go ahead. Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run through it for you real quick. And like I said, I'll I'll share our I'll share our math with you. Uh, our, not our math, but our costing, so you can put two and two together. So in uh, Article 10, Supplemental Pay, Section 1, Certification Pay, we're going to propose that intermediate fire certification be $75, advanced fire certification be $100, and master fire certification be $150. And just so you know, those numbers uh, that we're using, we got from you guys. Um, I mean, I'll give you the numbers real quick. Uh, just as an example, you guys priced the advanced certification out at 189,000, the master certification at 338,000, and I missed one, didn't I? Intermediate. Intermediate at 244,000. So most of those numbers that you're going to see on the second sheet I'm going to give you are your numbers. Some of them we did we did the math on, and then you know that'll reflect in the sheet. So we're going to propose that a certified EMT uh, be at fifty dollars, and there was a little bit of of um, I think we had a misunderstanding on when we when we talked about a licensed paramedic. I think Eddie priced it that someone might be able to get both of those pays. That's not what we're proposing. What we're proposing is that you can get one or the other, depending on which certification you have. If you have a licensed paramedic, it's it's um, it's a little bit nicer to have. It's a little bit harder to get. Uh, we're going to propose that at $150 per month. Fire prevention inspector, we're going to propose at $75 per month. Fire investigator at $100 per month. Arson investigator at $125 per month. Then we're going to go down to assignment pays. We want to change hazmat assignment to $150 per month. We want to change the rescue truck station to $150 per month. And we want to take away the hazmat qualified requirement. We want to add water boat rescue at $150 a month. Drone team assignment, I think you guys said there were 10 guys that got that pay. We're gonna propose that at $50 per month. SWAT team assignment at $125 per month. And the battalion chief administrative assignment at $100 per month. And right now that's currently just one battalion chief per shift, so it's three of them. Uh, Johnny, real quick, before you go up any further, can you go back up to the hazmat and rescue? I know yeah. you removed the hazmat qualified, but the, and I thought I gave it to you in our counters with the language that we have previously worked on for hazmat and rescue station along with definitions. Is that still, do you still see that being included in here? I, I think so. Are we talking about um, in order to, You know, you have to be at a designated hazmat station or designated rescue station, and then the definition uh, laying out the. Uh, what is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're we're good with what we've worked on previously in our. Okay, I just want to make sure. It, it should fall right in line with that, Lillian. Okay. I would anticipate that one of the things that might happen in the next two, three, four years is that rescue station number three will no longer be hazmat. And that's just, just my way of thinking. They, you know, that's a lot to put on that one station. They're hazmat and rescue. Uh, those are two unique uh, specialties. Uh, it's hard to have someone, I'm not saying it's impossible, it's just difficult to have someone trained in both. Okay. Um, in the staff assignments, this is the 40 hour week. We're going to propose a zero to three years, go to 225, four to five years, 275, and six or more years, go to 300. I think that's a $75 bump in each one of those classifications. 
uh, been pretty steady for well over 25, 30 years. And then section three, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is our acting pay. We're gonna propose, and again, we're, we're gonna use your numbers. Uh, when you see our sheet, they're, they came from Ed. What it works out to is $52, $60, $68, and $75. Okay. And then under longevity, we're gonna propose a longevity at 1250 per year, capped out at 25 years. Give me one second, Lily, okay? Okay. Hey, Lillian. Uh -huh. So um, Article 10 is we're going to submit it is inclusive of all things that are economic. The one thing that you're going to see on the sheet that I'll send you will be the military leave. Okay. You guys said that that had a $217,000 cost for four years. Yeah. I'm going to put that on our sheet and there'll be a sum at the bottom. Okay. So yeah. Give me about two minutes and I'll send it to you, okay? Okay. And hold on. Sorry. Let me just look at something real quick. Okay. When you send me whatever you're fixing to send me, is it also going to include which uh, wage option that you're going with? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, do you want it to? Yeah, I think I think we need to at this point probably see it as a whole. I mean, there's not that there were significant differences between those two, but. I mean, if you're leaning more to one one or the other, I think we'd like to consider it all in its totality. Okay, give me give me one second. Okay.
Okay, Lillian. All right. It's sent, so you want to get an email. Um, in the email, I we would we would probably lean towards option one, which was the one percent the first year for the ten years. That would be the option we would probably lean at. Let me know when you get it. Got it. I'm opening it up right now. Sorry for a second. Okay, give me one second. I'm gonna I'm gonna share it so everybody can see it. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just wait for you to pull it up. All right, so I got it up on the screen. <clears throat> and again, most of these, most of these numbers came from you guys. So we have no reason to dispute them. Um, longevity, you priced it at 2.695423. You can see our number. And then you can just go right down the, the um, the sheet. Okay. So specifically like the acting pay, that number you gave to us, uh, assignment pays, you gave that to us. Um, all the advanced cert pays, we're using your, your numbers. So they all should be really, really close. And at the bottom, you'll see what the costs are. Okay. And you said option, um, sorry, option, I've got, option one. Yes, ma'am. I called it scenario one. Okay. Okay. Um, before we take a break, let me ask around with my team, are there any que obvious questions or any questions you have before we take a break on any of it? None for me. Not for me. Okay. Eddie, Michael, do you all have anything off the top of your head? I know we might need to take some time. But. Yeah, I think I'm good for now. Okay. Okay, Johnny, you give me about, let me um, caucus with my team here and I'll text you here in maybe about 15, 20 minutes, see where we're at. Yeah, just send me the document and I'll get it, I'll get it signed for you. I, I hear you, I hear you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right, y'all there? Michael, are you on? No. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, Johnny, thank y'all for giving me some time to work through that. Um, I just emailed you two items and I'm gonna go ahead and also share my screen and pull these up. What I'm presenting to you is a city's final offer in a package. I'm including both economic and non-economic items in there. I'm doing it in a summary because I just think it's easier to um, view and for time and purposes, I, I thought it'd be much quicker than having to go in and redline each one of these items, these areas, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely more than willing to go through them at length to make sure that we're all on this, the same page and understanding what we're looking at. Can everyone see that? Yes. Okay. Um, the first part on the total economics, you'll see Article 12, the um, healthcare plan changes. That is, um, we had a verbal TA on that today. I know we talked about there's still probably some cleanup areas that we're going to hit as far as reorganizing certain parts of the healthcare plan, making sure that it flows and is um, simple to follow and, and make sense. But as far as the conceptually and the majority of, of the 
big items to that, those changes, I believe we've agreed on that. The second item is your, your wage proposal, option one. That's adding in the 84 year step plus a 1% for um, 120, those who are in their 120 month step for year one and year two, a 1%, year three, a 2%. I'm sorry, this, I left that off. That's supposed to be year four, 2%. There we go. Uh, let me just put that. Look better the other way. <laughs> That's a very good try. Um, longevity, agreeing uh, to your proposal at twelve fifty a month for the max of twenty five years. I included this no back pay. We have it in our original counter that we had provided. This really just means that kind of no retroactivity going backwards. It's from the you know. Um, execution of the agreement moving forward, it'll be calculated that way moving forward. We're not going to go back and recalculate as if you know, somebody should have been receiving 1250 the whole time. I know that's not how we've costed it out. Just want to make sure that's clear. Um, acting pay increase. Uh, we have agreed and included your acting pay increase for firefighter twos to 52, captains to 60, battalion chiefs to 68, and assistant chiefs to 75. Hazmat station assignment pay, we have agreed to the 150 per month. I have added in here just to make sure, um, this is something that I asked you when you gave us the uh, package proposal, was that we're including the definitions and previous language that we worked, we, we worked on. Um, so I'll, when I actually really type all this up formally, I'll go ahead and add that in there. And the same is for rescue station pay, we've accepted y'all's proposal on that as well of 150 per month and including that definition and previously agreed to language. A water boat rescue assignment pay, we're actually countering that and I think you had 150, we're putting it at 100. Uh, we need to still define that um, probably in a definition and in the actual assignment pay, um, but that's something I believe that we can work on together uh, along with Chief Quintero and Chief Irvin. Number eight, the licensed paramedic pay. Um, I wanted to clarify that this is the state uh, cert certificate certification that you receive. It's a, um, a certain conditions and you um, confirm that for me. So we've agreed and added that in at 150 per month. SWAT pay, which we've pre previously had on the table, we've kept on here at 125 per month. The administrative duty assignment pay, um, when you all initially proposed the, the BAT4 pay, we went ahead and agreed to it and put it on the table, but we changed the title just in case if it ever was to switch or move around. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it was the actual duty that has, that's being paid for, not just the position, the bat for position. Um, but we are agreeing to the $100 a month. Right now it currently is the bat for position. We, I put need to define, I think I already added some language in our initial proposal uh, or counter proposal, or actually, I guess it would have been agreement. Um, I want to just make sure, you know, we have some time that y'all agree to that and that it makes sense and is clear. On military time, we have countered, you were at 300 and we went to 240, which is still a significant increase, but, uh, you know, it's, that's where we're at on that. And then number 12, we've identified the unrestricted fund balance that we're transferring over that we've identified in our healthcare plan to um, cover one increases to the health savings account for those who sign up for the CDHP and any additional monies that are remaining to be um, uh, put in the uh, benefits trust account as a one-time contribution. And then on the, that, so that is the total economic package. On the total non-economic package, I just included a line item for previously executed agreements. We have quite a few that were signed on June the 2nd, other than laying them all out. Um, we each have copies of them. And I've also included the two that we kind of verbally agreed to earlier, which included the drug testing, the removal of um, those two uh, administrators from that and the leave accruals for the 410 schedule. Um, I know we're still going to go through the contract and make sure that we identify each of the areas that, that needs to be included for the, you know, leave accruals on that 410 schedule, but I just wanted to include that in here. 
We've agreed to your proposal on the president's time off um, instead of uh, uh, taking out the personal leave on the front end. We're going to wait and take it out on the back end like you kind of defined as a receipt and take it out from there. On Article 8 on the pension board meetings, uh, you had proposed, I believe it was five shifts to attend state or national. We have proposed it to three and included the national uh, part in, in that language. And Article or Article 22, number four, the removal of the EMS points that you proposed on the 22nd. Um, I have left off the, I'm drawing a blank, um, testing, the promotional testing. I think that we're um, willing to probably add that in. There was a few other items that we just wanted to vet with y'all, but to really kind of get things moving. And I know we're kind of more focused on the economics. Um, I went ahead and just left it off for right now, but that's something that I think we can talk about. Um, and just, there's just a couple items that uh, Chief Quintero and Chief Urban brought up that I just want to make sure that we're all considering before we do agree to that. Okay. Okay. So that is where we are at. Do you have any questions? Does this make sense? I just want to, like I said, I just thought this would be easier and I know everyone's just waiting and trying to just expedite things. Can I uh, ask you about number 10, the administrative duty assignment pay? Yes, sir. We're talking about, you know, we don't, we don't negotiate Are we talking about a battalion chief at that rank? Yes. So if, if the department was to move away to, um, to an assistant chief, how would that, how do you, how do you propose that that thing's worded? The way we proposed it or Well, what I had in my language, and I don't know if this helps anything, and I just didn't have it in here, but this is what I had in the proposal package that we put together on June 11th and provided y'all. Um, I have administrative duty assignment paid $100 per month. The battalion chief currently assigned to handle daily administrative duties, including scheduling, overtime, callbacks, and other administrative functions shall be entitled to receive administrative duty assignment pay. Okay. okay, so that's pretty specific. Yeah. Okay. I think it was just if the if the duties were assigned in a different way, but it was still acknowledging the bat the battalion chief. Okay. So I would I would use that same language. Can I, uh, it's, it's in that one. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm just, Lily, I'm curious. <clears throat> I mean, of all the things that we left off, was there, was there a specific reason why staff assignments weren't addressed? The 40 hour week? No, it really came down to cost and Money. looking at, right, just you had mentioned acting pay as being such a priority because it's been neglected for so many decades, apparently. So, you know, I know that that was something that we wanted to address that was longevity and the wage proposal that was already, that was already a huge chunk. So from there, it was just, okay, what can, what can we make work? What do we also want to, um, you know, what it was the focus of the department? You know, we, we've had a lot of discussion about the hazmat rescue station assignments, the rescue boat assignments, you know, uh, paying guys for the work being done versus that type of certification. So those are ones that have been neglected for a very long time. So the thought was to, to bring those up, you know, to, to make them, uh, 
to make them more competitive as well. So, you know, we were focusing on that, you know, so yeah, it really, it really just comes down to cost. <laughs> okay. Um, we're gonna need a little bit of time. Okay. Um, to go over it and. I got you. You um, received my email. It should have both. Yeah. Of okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I've got it. Okay. Um, give us maybe. Maybe 15, 30 minutes, something like that. Okay. No problem. Uh, I mean, I know we've got dinner coming too, so. Oh, man. Michael, do we? No. No, maybe not. Dinner? Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just, just give us a 15, 20 minute, 30 minutes, something like that. And, and uh, let me talk to my team. Okay. Um, we appreciate the work you guys did, you know, putting it together and um, let us look it over, let us digest it a little bit and we'll get back with you shortly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Lilia. Yes, sir. Hey, we found a small problem, so I got to reprint something. Just give me two minutes. Okay. Right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave us up. All right. That's how fast it's going to be. Well, they don't want you to hear them. All right, Lilia. Yes, sir. You just went to the printer, so should be both in. I think um, trying to get you some vitamin D or what? Yeah, you know, I'm trying to feel that sunlight a little bit. So, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So, in a, with the idea to save a little bit of time, I'm just going to tell you. Um, I don't know if see, Eddie's not here, right? Um, I think he's uh, probably around the corner from Michael. So if we need him, we Michael can grab him. If you wanted to bring up your city's last and best final offer, maybe we can just codify it there, and then I can uh, send you the sheet. Okay. If, Hey, real quick, while we're waiting on that, we gave you, um, you guys costed our proposals, I'm sure, because you, how close was our math? Um, you know? I didn't really do a side by side, honestly. Um, I'm not like sure. I think so. I, th I think so. Okay. There was a couple that were, um, I think uh, maybe just a little bit on oversight. Like I think for one, the rescue, I want to say it was either rescue station or the water boat you had at the previous amount, like at the 75 still not going up to 150. Um, so we adjusted that. It was one, one of those. Okay. Um, yeah. Cause I, it was still on the original proposal. Um, that y'all that we had. So I caught that. Yeah.
So do you, is this what you're talking about pulling up? No, no, no. Okay. I think we're ready. We're recording you. Yes. Okay. So on your on your sheet that you've got up, uh, I think number one, we're good with number one. Number two is good. Actually, I want to talk to you about number two. So let's just, I'm going to circle that one for now. Number three is good. Number four, we want to, we want to change those numbers. We want to change them to uh, 40, 50, 60, and 70. On number four? Yeah. Okay, on the acting pay. 40, yes, 40 50, 60, 70. Okay. On hazmat assignment, we want to change that to 125. Okay. On rescue station assignment, we want to change that to 125. Okay. Water boat rescue, we want to change to 125. You want to increase it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Numbers eight, nine, and 10, we want to scratch. Scratch them, remove them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Military time was good. Okay. Uh, the unrestricted fund balance, whatever that number is. Okay. I understand it, but we'll, we'll go with it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we want to add, we want you guys to add back in TCFP, but I'm going to give you some new numbers. The TCFP. Okay. Hold on. This is the master or intermediate advanced yeah. master. Yeah. I think we had priced it at 75, 100, 150, right? That, that was the original. No, sorry. We would ask you to price that at uh, 50, 75, and 125. Okay. And we also want to add uh, the 40 hour staffing at what we proposed. Is that right, Jason? At what we proposed? The staff assignments? Yes, ma'am. The staff assignments, the 40 hour work week. That was a 75, 100, and 125? Um, no, the staff assignments were 225, 275. Oh, look at, oh those were, sorry, those are assignment piece. Um, yeah. But the differences are $75 in each one. Okay, 225. 275 and 300. I think you guys priced it out at 44, 184, 13, 256, and 80, 364, respectively. Okay. Um, you should come up to a to a total of about. We did that. We did that. I told you the acting pay, right? Yes, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. Yes, ma'am. You should come up to a total around ten two ninety five. And then I want to throw one more thing on you. I just want to want you to think about it. <clears throat> we wanted to see about. Can you can you bring yourself up? Can I what? Can you unshare this? 
Oh yeah, sorry. Okay. What do you want me to, oh, you're sharing something, gotcha. No, I'm not gonna share anything. Oh, okay. Um, what we wanted to talk to you about was if you would, if your team would talk about and consider changing our wage scale from currently right now at six months, 18 months, 30 months. We wanted to see about if you guys would think about changing it to one year, 20, uh, 12 months, 24 months, and 48 months. <clears throat> okay. Well, Johnny, I'll tell you right now, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that one, just revisiting the 84 months and adding that in and looking at that was, was a pain. It was a lot of work that they put into it. And we did it thinking that that's really where y'all wanted to go. Um, I don't know. It's kind of, to me, it's kind of late in the game to just re, you know, visit that whole thing and start, that's almost like starting from scratch on that. Um, I really like to stick with the option that we have on there. Um, yeah, that, that's going to be, I can tell you that's definitely not going to get done tonight. And yeah. I think Eddie's not on right now and he had to get guys to come in and help him to really go through and do that. And I'm pretty confident those guys probably aren't around either. Um, and that really is, is bringing something pretty new when we're, we're this far into it. Um, He's given what's that? We've, I think we've given your team, you know, something to chew on at, at the, okay. you know, not considering the, I mean, we, we would really hope you guys would consider the 12, 24, 48, okay. you know, if what you're saying is, you know, you, you're all, you know, it's like starting, I don't think we're starting over from scratch, but you know, we understand that. We've given you something to chew on at okay. 95, um, 456, I think is the number. You know, um, let's see where we go from there. Okay. Um, I don't think Eddie is in his office right now. So I will probably have to cost this out and then reconvene probably tomorrow. Um, just to make sure that one, I need, we need to be able to track him down and make sure that he can run this. And I hate to just keep everyone waiting if it's gonna take longer uh, then, you know, 20, 30 minutes just to track him down and be able to have him compute this. Do these changes. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I know, you know, we're trying to get this accomplished. Yeah. There's nothing funny in the math. I can promise you that. Um, it's okay. really just, um, hold on a second. something real quick. Um, is, is Eddie there or not? No, I think Michael went by his office. He is currently not in his office. Now, whether he's around or not, I'm not too sure. Michael, do you, did you know if he's actually around or is he just not in his office? I just walked by his office. And I think he left for the day okay. or the night. So, when's the earliest we can meet? Thursday? Tomorrow, Michael? Can you meet tomorrow? Uh, we have council tomorrow. Okay. Uh, I guess Wednesday. Michael, does that work for you? Um, give me one second. Okay. What about the posting requirement? Oh yeah, darn. Okay. Yeah, I think it's the, well, okay, one, that. seventy-two hours. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll chime in here, guys. Uh, so if we don't reconvene tomorrow, then we are subject to the posting issue. But if we do reconvene tomorrow, where we would be okay? Yeah. So, in, I, 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 and Michael, feel free to tell me no, but if we reconvene in the morning, we could meet for maybe a couple hours before council starts, but I mean, that, that's all depending on your schedule. Yeah, I could do a couple hours tomorrow morning. 
All right. You want to aim for that? Hey, Mike. Yes, sir. I can assure you there's nothing funny in the math. We're, we're using your guys' math. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can assure you that when you calculate it, it's going to come out to 10295. Yes, sir. If it's different than that, then, you know, you can, I don't let you beat me with a stick or nothing. No, I, I, I know you, I know you're not trying to pull a fast one or anything like that. We, we believe we're, not, we're not trying to do that. And right. I would, I would almost say that if it's, if it's less than 10, 295, we'll live with it. If it's more, we'll bring it down. Whatever we got to do to bring it down to 10, 295. Okay. So that's where we're at. Okay. Well, let's, like I said, let, let me get a hold of Eddie. We'll work on this tonight. Let's reconvene first thing in the morning. And, okay. uh, you know, I think if we can get Eddie and if, if I can get him on the phone tonight and work through this, then I think the morning can move pretty quickly. That way we don't encroach on um, Michael's other obligations. Um, and it should, you know, it, we should move very quickly, so. Okay. All right, 9 a.m. Is Chief Urban on the phone, on the call? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Chief, I'm gonna need uh, Steve and John. On there, okay, man. He's on vacation. Okay. So I just Man, what are you doing there? <laughs> okay. Okay. And really I'm going to send you our uh, economic proposals worksheet. Okay. So it spelled out. Okay. I'll send that to you as soon as we get off. And then we'll see you guys at nine o'clock, I guess. Yeah, we'll come back on at nine. It shouldn't be an issue. All right. right. Well, we got a lot done. Thank y'all. I think so. I think we're very close. So. Okay. Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate it.